What's up, grinders? Welcome to the Grindcast. Welcome to episode three of the Grindcast. Today we will be talking about a couple other things. Not as much as usual, but it'll still be. Um, it'll, it'll still be a couple things, but I want to save about ten minutes shorter than the last two podcasts. But it will be. Um, it will be. Still a podcast. So I devoted myself to doing a podcast every week. So here you are. Uh, not much has happened in the past week, so that's why it'll be a little shorter. Today, today I've got about four points that I want to talk about, and um, see how see where time gets us. So to start off, we'll be talking about the the Maple Leafs hiring, well, naming um, Kyle Dubas as general manager of their hockey club. Kyle Dubas has been in the in the Kyle Dubas has been in the in the Toronto Maple Leafs system for since 2014, when he was hired as assistant general manager by Brendan Shanahan. In 2015, he was named interim um, in the inter, interim general manager for a couple months until uh, Lou Lamoriello came along and became the general manager. And um, Lula Muriel did not renew his contract this season. Brendan Shanahan decided not to retain him, but he will be a senior hockey advisor, I think it is. So, um, and Cal Dubas is named as general manager. Um, I, I, I honestly, I did not, when it happened, I did not see the Toronto Maple Leafs not rehiring Lula Muriello. Lula Muriello is a legendary general manager. It's, I, I was surprised by their move, but I'm a little happy that the team chose to uh, to name Kyle Dubas as the general manager because honestly, he just he deserves it. And uh, he's he's making history as he's the second youngest general manager in NHL history, behind John Chaika, who was hired when he was I think 25 or 26. Now he's 26 or 27. So now that's really that's all there is about that. And um, next we have the conference finals. I will be ta- I'll be saying I'll be discussing a couple matchups for the fi- for conference finals, and I'll be saying my predictions as well. In the East, we have Alexander Vetchkin and the Washington Capitals versus Steven Stamkos and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Wa- uh, um, Washington finally has made it past the third round, uh, second round by finally eliminating. Uh, um, Pittsburgh for the first time in the Vetchkin and Crosby era, and the th- first time since either 1994 and or 1997. I don't remember the exact year. And um, this this is the third time out of 11 times at the well, the two teams have met 11 times in the postseason, and wa- watch this is the third time that Washington has ever beat the, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And um. The Tampa Bay Lightning. I predicted him to win the Stanley Cup last year, right after Pittsburgh. Right after Pittsburgh won the cup, I said next year Tampa's winning the cup. So far, they're the favorite. They're one of the favorites. That is, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. So, um, both teams have crazy good net miners in. So Washington, they have Braden Holby and also Calvin. No, not Calvin Pickard. Uh, Philip Grubauer. Oh, why am I thinking Calvin Pickard? They have Gr- Philip Grubauer and Baron Holby, and I. But um, the NBA Lightning have Br- um, Andre Vasilevsky and either Louis Philippe Domingue or um, or Peter Budai. I haven't been paying much attention to the Tampa Bay Lightning this year, even though I said I wanted to. But I haven't paying as much attention as I wanted to. And um, I think that the Tampa. Tampa Bay Lightning goaltending has a slight edge over Washington. I'll tell you why. Washington's Brain Holby is playing like a god right now, but I think he's gonna simmer down and play like his usual self. Like he had, he had an off year by his standards this year, but I think he's in the playoffs. He completely brought bought himself back, but I think he's gonna go back down a bit because he's gonna get off that high. And um. I and I think I just think that that Vasilevsky's the better goaltender in the in the two. But I could be wrong. You never, never. 
yeah, you never know what's going to go on in the playoffs. And you never know who's a better goaltender. I personally think that Vasilevsky is a better goaltender. But hey, I could be wrong. It's just my opinion, right? <coughs> <coughs> and then, um, I think that Washington has the more pure goal score in, uh, in Alexander Vetchkin. But, but, I think that uh, Tampa is more complete as a team. Because if we remember last year, Tampa, uh, sorry, last year Tampa signed Chris Kunitz um, and a couple other people. I don't remember. All, I don't remember who exactly who signed who. And um, and Washington lost a bunch of key core players like um, Kevin Shattenkirk. You know, he was only there there for one year. They lost Carl, Carl Alzner and they lost Nate Schmidt. Just to name a few guys. I don't remember who exactly they all lost. There's just to name a couple of guys. Those are who. Uh, that's who the Washington Capitals lost last year. Tampa. <coughs> they have. They have Ryan McDonough on a second pair. When you have Ryan McDonough on the second pair, you know you've got a god, godlike defensive defensive core. Because I think that Ryan McDonough. He had. He had. A, he had an off year. He had an off year. But I still think he's one of the be- best, better um, defensemen in the league today. He's, he's not. He's not a Norris play. He's not a Nor- Norris winning. Defenseman by any means, but I personally consider him being a late, a late defense, defenseman. So I believe that the Tampa Bay Lightning will be taking the, the series in seven in double overtime. That's my personal opinion. I think they're going to fight it out till the end. What I also believe is that the Vegas Gold Knights versus the Winnipeg Jets is going to be a treat of a series as well. I think it's going to be a neck electrifying series. Both teams, it's their first ever time making it past the well, well, I'll just correct myself there. Vegas is their first year. They're in the playoffs in their first year. They're the first ever team to do that. Uh, they're the first team to ever make it beyond the first round. And their first year, obviously. And um, I think it's, 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 a, it's really a crazy story, if you ask me. And But also, if you look at Winnipeg, Winnipeg is their first time in franchise history to win a playoff game. So I think it's it's the both both teams are making history. They both are. And it's the first time Winnipeg has won a game obviously in the playoffs. And it's the first time also that they've made it past the first round, past the second round, and into the third round. It's the first time I've ever done that. Also, I'm also talking from when the team was in Atlanta. But um I'm not talking about the original Winnipeg Jets that are now in Arizona, who I believe should be relocated, but that's a story for another day. That's, an, that's a story for another day. Um, so, um, Winnipeg, they've, in my opinion, Winnipeg has the younger... Winnipeg has the better... No, I don't know. Vegas has a better depth. No doubt about it. They've got a 40 goals, 43 goal score in... So I'm, I'm, I think Vegas is the better offense. You got the Ve- uh, Vegas is better offense. Winnipeg has a better defense, but Vegas is better goaltending. I'll explain that in a, in a bit. Um, Vegas has William Carlson, who scored 43 goals this year. Winnipeg has um, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Patrick Liney, who scored what? I think it was 45 goals he scored. So it's it's. That's even the first line, and they've got Mar- Mark Shifley versus um, I'm gonna say James Neal. They're both elite players. I think I really think James Neal's underrated. I think the first line. I want to say the first line goes to. It's it's really tough because the first line goes to uh, Winnipeg, but it's 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 close. It's really close between the two teams. Because when you have, because when you have a guy who scored 43, 43 goals and and two guys who scored over twenty goals on the first line, I don't even remember who was on the first line for Vegas, but I think both, I think the first line's close. But Winnipeg has slight uh, slight advantage for the first line, but I think the rest of them, the rest of the offense goes straight to to Vegas as they've got better depth. And the defense it goes straight to it goes straight to uh, Winnipeg. I think I think that um, Winnipeg has a couple of good people in Derek Englund, um, 
Nate Schmidt. And a couple other guys. I don't I don't really remember who's on the team right now and I feel bad because I don't remember who's on the team. But I think Um Vegas is all about depth. That's all they're about this year and that's why they're so successful. They're so successful. They're they they're good at playing together. And people don't realize that. And then um the goaltending, I want I better goaltender it's 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 tough between Flurry and Hellebuke because they both had brilliant 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 years but I'm gonna give it to Flurry because Flurry has more experience and like I said it's the first time that they that Winnipeg has ever made the playoffs and <laughs> Flurry has what 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 no three rings yeah he has three rings right and um really that's all I got about that Vegas is going to win in six. Um, now we'll talk about Mike Fisher retiring again. Again. He retired last year after losing in the conference finals. Sorry, no. He retired last year. He retired last year after losing to the, in the cup finals against Pittsburgh. And this year he retired right after losing to the Winnipeg Jets in the second round. I think he's going to eventually come back. He wants a cup. He really does, and he's gonna come back if he sees that Nashville is good enough next year to contend again. I, if if they're good enough, he's gonna he's gonna come back. Oh, he's gonna want to. <laughs> That's my opinion on that. It's just we're done with that. It's really quick. And now I'll be talking about Jim Montgomery being hired as new coach as a new coach for the Dallas Stars. This kind of surprised me, honestly, because um, I didn't. Surprised me. It's, it surprised me when Dallas hired Ken Hitchcock. Da- Dallas has been surprised me a lot for the past year or so. It surprised me about how many people they signed in the offseason. Surprised me that they didn't make the playoffs. Surprised me that they, that they that they hired Ken Hitchcock last year. Everything they did surprised me. Um, and it surprised me yet again by hiring Jim Montgomery after Ken Hitchcock retired. I did. I didn't think they, they'd go for people with no NHL experience. I really thought that. That they'd hire a guy like um, who? Who is a good example? I don't know, but yeah, this it really hired me. It, it really surprised me, but I think it's a nice hiring on Dal on the Dallas Stars, and I hope to see Dallas really get success because they deserve it. They've been playing, they've been playing pretty good for the past few years. They've got really good players in Tyler Singh and Jimmy Ben, Alexander Radulov, Jason Spezza, um, Ben Bishop. John Klinberg, Mark Maffat, they've, they've got a solid, they've got a solid core, um, Matthias Janmar, they've, I really think they just deserve the cup, they deserve success, and that's all I've really got for today, so that's about it, um, we'll give a little quick update before I leave though, my buddy wasn't able to come today for today's podcast because he had work, and uh, I'm, I'm uploading a podcast every week to, um, Spreaker.com, SoundCloud.com, and YouTube.com. I'm trying to find a way to get more and get get podcasts published on other sites such as Spotify, Podbean, even on the Apple or Android podcast service. But that's that's really it's a work in progress, and that's all I have for today. It turned turned into my longest podcast so far. So that's all we've got for today. Thank you so much for listening. See ya.